Hi all, welcome to the channel Cloud Knowledge. Today in this video we will study about delete activity in Azure Data Factory and Azure Synapse Analytics. So this delete activity comes under the move data section of the standard documentation by Microsoft on Data Factory documentation. Under the move data, after copy activity we have the delete activity. In the documentation it is said that it is used to delete files or folders from on-premises storage stores or cloud storage stores. We use this activity to clean up or archive files when they are no longer needed. So delete activity is used to delete files as well as folders and we will demonstrate this. Here is a warning. Deleted files or folders cannot be restored unless the storage has soft delete enabled. So we should be cautious when we are using delete activity. Then there are a few best practices mentioned here as recommendations to back up your files before deleting them using delete activity if you want to restore them later. Make sure that the service has write permissions to the delete folders else it will not delete. Make sure you are not deleting files that are being written at the same time. So that time should be considered. If you want to delete files or folders from on-premises, make sure you are using self-hosted integration runtime SHIR. And then if we go further down, it has the demonstration with the help of the street screenshots of how we are going to use this activity in the ADF. So let's go to the portal and we are going to see what files we are going to delete. Okay, so this is the portal, Azure portal for ADF and we'll go to the author tab and we'll click on plus new pipeline and we'll try to create a new pipeline with the name pipeline delete activity and then we'll take the delete activity which comes under the general tab here with the name as delete in the canvas and then in the general settings tab that is the first tab we'll leave the settings as is and then we'll go to the source tab so the main setting is here so here the first setting is data set we have to select the data set so let's first go to the storage account where the files and folders exist and which folder we are going to or which file we are going to delete. So we'll demonstrate both for folder as well as files. Okay, so let's go here. In the cloud knowledge into storage account, we'll go to the test input folder. There's a folder and inside this test input folder, we have a subfolder called input files. We'll go inside it and here you can see there are multiple files. There are JSONs, CSVs, XLS, okay. And then there is a subfolder inside this folder input files, okay. Test input folder, input files, and then there is a test delete activity folder too. It also has different types of files. So we'll go to this folder location inside the test input input files. And in the first uh, example of the usage of delete activity, we'll try to delete the files from here which are having the extension as CSV. Okay, so we'll delete all the CSVs which are present here. So in total we have one, two, three and four CSV. Okay, so let's first connect to the test input, input files location. So we'll go to the data set and click on plus new and select the storage gen2. Let's name this as Dell input Link service we already have for that storage account. We'll select that link service and then browse to the file path. So that file path lies inside the test input folder, inside the input files. And from these files, we have to delete the CSV. So we'll only browse up to the folder location input files and then we'll click on OK. Click on OK. So this is done. We have browse to the folder location from where we want to delete the file and since we only want to delete the CSVs so here second option appears is the file path type so in the file path type we'll select the wildcard file path once we select the wildcard file path we can mention here what sort of files we want to delete so let's say we want to delete all the files all will denote by star which has the extension like dot CSV Okay, so we have given the wildcard file path name and if we open the data set here, here also we, we can see that we have browsed to the 
folder location, test input folder, that is a container and the directory input file, that is a folder, another folder and the files which we have mentioned here in the wildcard file path name. Okay, so we have done the settings. Next setting is filter by last modified. For this usage, we'll take another instance later in this video. The next uh, property is recursively. Okay, so if we check recursively, it will process all the files inside that input folder and its subfolders recursively or just the ones in the selected folder. The setting is disabled when a single file is selected. Okay, so here we have the folder. And if we want to delete all the files which are CSVs and that to inside this inside the subfolders. So we have a subfolder inside the input files, right? This subfolder also has CSVs. Okay, so if we want to delete the CSVs which are present inside this folder too, that is recursively, then we will enable this option. So first, let's say we will disable this option and we want to only delete the CSVs which are present inside the test input input files folder. Okay, so we have done the setting here in the delete activity for the first example and then we'll validate this and during validation, we got a notification that we have to select the link service for, for logging. So if we click on this uh, and we close here, it will take us to the third tab that is called the logging settings. And by default, the delete activity, this logging is enabled. Okay. So logging is, let's say we are deleting some files and we want to log it into a, a storage location where we get the data, like what all for files and folders have been deleted by this delete activity for logging purpose. This logging settings is present in the activity. So for this example, we'll not consider logging. So for this example, we'll not consider logging. So we'll dis disable it. And then we'll go back to the source, try to validate the delete activity and perform a debug run. So let's wait for the delete activity to complete. And it succeeded. So here we go and see the input. The input is the data set which we have defined, del input, the data set name, and here wildcard file name the properties which we gave for the delete activity and in the output we'll see the results okay so if we maximize this output it will show us the different properties of uh, the delete activity output and in the final output it will show us the number of files deleted okay so files deleted here is shown as the count four and if we go here back to this input files folder location we have in total one two three and four csvs so all these four csvs are deleted by this delete activity so if we close here and if we go so if we close here and if we go to the test input folder this location and click on refresh we won't see those csvs so all those csvs have been deleted and since in the delete activity we have not enabled the recursively option it will not delete the CSVs which are present in the subfolder. Okay, so these CSVs are intact. They are not deleted. Only the CSVs which were present inside the input files are deleted. One more important thing, if we have not defined the CSV, star.csv, and we have let that file path be up to that folder location, then what happens is that all the files would get deleted. Okay, it will not consider specific file type. Now let's go back here to the delete activity and take the second example of the usage of delete activity. And now this time we will enable the recursively option. And since at this file location, we no longer have the CSVs, we have deleted all the CSVs and we are left with the JSONs, Excels. And in the subfolder too, we have a few JSONs and CSVs. So what we'll do is we'll try to take the JSON as the wildcard file name. Okay, here in the same JSON uh, delete activity, we'll take the star.json that we want these JSONs to be deleted and recursively. That means the JSON from this location input files, that means these two JSONs as well as from the recursive folder path, delete the JSONs which are present here. So there are, so here also we have two JSONs, Cosmos and item three. So let's go back here and since we have given this option dot json star dot json 
and recursive option check mark we will now validate again our delete activity and perform a debug run to see whether recursively the JSON files are deleted or not. Let's wait for it to finish. So the activity finished. We'll go to the output, maximize it and see the properties here. So the files deleted is shown as again 4 means the two JSONs from the parent folder and two from the subfolder. Okay, so just when we open it, it is already refreshed and the JSONs are gone from the inner folder. And if we go back to the input files, the JSONs again have been deleted. Okay, so this demonstrated that how we use recursively option here, how we use the wildcard file path in the delete activity. Okay, now next we'll go for changing the data set here and browsing it up to the file location up to the file name okay so let's go here and browse test input folder inside the input files will go and this time we'll go up to this test delete activity folder and from this folder we want to delete students marks.csv file so we we'll select that file because in the previous example we have selected only up to the folder level and then we have given the file choice using wildcard and this time we will select the specific file which we want to delete. So we'll select the file, click OK. So it will show us the container name, the directory and the file which is present there. Okay, so we have changed the data set as well as here we'll just now take the file path type as file path in data set. Okay, because we have already selected the file. Okay, and now since we have selected the file which is present inside this subfolder, the studentsmarks.csv, we'll execute the delete activity and see that this file gets deleted. So we have selected and this recursive option, as we have seen, the setting is disabled when a single file is selected. Okay, so we'll leave the setting here and we'll try to validate the delete activity and perform a debug run. Let's perform the debug run. It succeeded. Let's click on the output and in the output files deleted is shown as one. The count is one and we'll go to the test input location inside the test delete activity. We'll click on refresh and the students marks dot CSV file is deleted. Okay. So the file has been deleted. So we demonstrated how we delete a single file then the different types of files present in the folder location both with the recursive and the non-recursive option. The next feature which we'll demonstrate is the filter by last modified. The files with last modified time in the range start time end time will be filtered for further processing. The time will be specified to UDC time zone in the format mentioned here and these properties can be skipped which means no files attribute filter will be applied. So in the previous examples which we have shown, we have not selected this time period. Okay. But let's say if we want to delete files which are older. Okay. Then we will use this last modified filter. So we'll demonstrate this filter by last modified using a storage account location. This time we'll go to the containers and let's take the test output folder this time. And from the container, you can see that the last modified date that is the modified date column is here okay for all the files which are present here and the different dates are present right some are 23 some are older files 22 also so let's say in our requirement we want to delete all the files which are uh, older than the current year that is all 22 files we want to delete we will go in the delete activity data set first we'll try to browse to that location so we'll change the data set location back to the root folder and this time we'll select the test output folder directly and we want to apply that filter in the test output folder which I've shown you just now and want to apply the last modified filter so we have changed the data set now we'll go back here and filter by last modified will select the start and the end time so the end time uh, if you want to clear the start time we'll clear it okay we have the but to clear and the end time so the start time is the current date okay and the end time 
we want to select as all the files which are older than 1st January. So we'll select, okay, 1st January. 1st January, it will select 2023, 12 a.m. So all the files which are older than this, please delete those files for me. Okay, and here recursively is the option enabled. So we'll disable this option. So we'll have applied this filter and we'll validate the mapping and we'll perform a debug run. Let's wait for it to finish. So the activity succeeded. Let's go to the delete activity output. Click here, maximize and the files deleted are 18. Total files deleted are shown as 18. There were many files, right? So we'll close here and we'll go to the test output location, container location. We'll click on refresh. And we'll see now only the 23 files present. 2023 files are present. All the 22 files are deleted because we have given filter by last modified end date as 1123 and start date is today's date. Okay. So, so all the files which are older than 1st January 23 are deleted, which are present in this folder location that is the data set which we have defined here. Okay. So this is how this filter by last modified is used. And here we can give the start time also. Let's say we want to give the duration like within this month to this month, the file should be deleted. So that kind of filter we can apply as per our requirement here. So this is how we use delete activity in data factory. I hope you've got the understanding of it. Thank you for watching the video. Do let me know in comments if you have any queries. Happy learning. Bye.